Oh, hello. My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Whoa. So apparently today I decided to torture myself because it occurred to me that I don't think I've ever made like a very standard booktube video, which is just like my all time favorite books. I've never done that for this channel and I've been booktubing for more than two years now. So it occurred to me that it might be fun if I tried to do this once a year. So like every year, like, cause part of what I like about booktube is it's sort of a reading diary for me. Um, and I thought it might be kind of fun year over year to see how much fluctuation I have in my top 10 all time favorite books. Uh, and the reason I said I decided to torture myself is because I had a very hard time really like honing in on what needed to be on this list. So I've come up with a little ranking. I forced myself to pick what order these are in and some of these I went back and forth on a lot. So I am gonna plan to do this once a year. This is gonna be my 2019 top 10 all time favorite books edition. Um, I thought I'd start by actually showing you guys the two that did not make it in because if they happen to make it in next year, that would be, I think, an interesting data point. So the two that just came short were Heart of Obsidian by Nalini Singh, because this is like my favorite book in the series. And this is like one of my all time favorite series. I really like Nalini Singh, what she does with genre fiction stuff. Like, I just think it's really good. So that almost made the list. And then Hunger by Roxane Gay. This is my second all time favorite memoir. The first one is on the list. Um, but this is just like an amazing book that was really influential to me. So these are the two that almost made the list, but I forced myself to come up with the top 10. So without further ado, we will start at number 10 and work our way up to my all time favorite book, which if you watch this channel, you already know what that one is. So let's get into it. I should also mention that part of my thinking in this uh, picking was I was trying to make sure that the list also reflected at least a little bit the range of taste in terms of genre I have. So I was trying to think like different categories, some of my favorite books. So I decided to go with number 10 as The Obsession by Nora Roberts, because if you guys watch this channel, you know that I really love Nora Roberts slash J.D. Robb. She's an author I read a lot of. And this is maybe my favorite modern mystery to date. Like, I think this is probably my favorite, just like not a golden age or like classic mystery, um, just like a, you know, commercial fiction mystery kind of thing. Um, I absolutely love this book. I have an entire video with recommendations on where to start with Nora Roberts because I know her backlist can be intimidating because homegirl writes a ton of books. Um, but this is my personal favorite one. I really love the progression of following the narrator from childhood to adulthood. This is a serial killer kind of romantic suspense -y type book. Um, and there's like her dad in the opening pages, she's a child and discovers her dad is a serial killer. So you kind of see how that impacts her life after she reports him. And then um, years later, it looks like there's a serial killer copycat coming back trying to get her. Um, and she and the dude she is hooking up with have to figure out what to do about that. So this is number 10, probably my favorite commercial mystery. Number nine is a, mis a fantasy classic and my favorite high fantasy ever, and that is The Lord of the Rings. Now, one could say I'm cheating because there are editions where these are broken up into three books, but Tolkien wrote this with the intention that it would be published as one. And yeah, so I'm gonna cheat and get all three of them in here. If I had to pick one of them, I would pick Return of the King, but why Why do that to myself? So yeah, Lord of the Rings, it's a classic. Um, I think this kind of ruined what I would describe as like basic bitch medieval fantasy for me for pretty much anything else. Like to me, this is like the definitive version of like basically a recognizably medieval-y kind of world with some orcs and elves and dwarfs thrown in. This one is just the one I like. And so other ones, unless they're doing something else, I tend to not like as much. Um, I got to take a seminar on this book while I was in grad school. So I got to write like a big old paper on it and really like dive into the text. Uh, I really like the movie adaptations of this. Yeah, just like overall, one of my all time favorite books. And uh, I, like I said, I think my favorite sort of like high fantasy. Okay, number eight is my favorite I think I define this as a liminal fantasy book where it is recognizably our world, but with magic like thrown in there. Um, and that is Harry Potter and Death Deathly Hallows. This is my favorite in the Harry Potter books. Uh, I remember like, so I'm one of the kids that was lucky enough to like have these being released in real time for me. And this came out while I was in college. I remember I didn't, I managed to keep myself from being spoiled. I took this book and hid it away for like months. 
and over Thanksgiving break, I finally like decided I was ready to come like to end my Harry Potter journey. And I just remember being holed up in the room at my parents' house, sobbing like a baby, like, that's just like my memory of reading this book. I just love this. I think this is a, an incredibly effective ending to a fantasy series. Um, definitely things you could quibble with here and there, but I think overall for a, also YA, I think this is, is this my, yeah, I guess I'm saying this is my favorite YA book. So this is the only YA pick on this list. Um, but you know, there's nostalgia reasons why I love this. There's actual things like in the book that I love about this. And then just the reading experience overall, like coming to a close. But yes, I put this at number eight, because this is a very, this book holds a very special place in my heart, and always will. I just realized that a lot of my top 10 are pretty basic, like very predictable choices. But hey, color me basic, I guess. Okay, so number seven is my favorite nonfiction book, apparently, just based on this. And oh, no, guys, I messed up. I just realized it didn't include all the President's Men on this list. And that is my actual favorite. Oh, man. So does that mean I need to drop the obsession out? I guess that means the obsession would fall off of this list. Oh, man, that was an oversight. Okay, well, we'll just, <laughs> we'll just keep going. I messed up guys. Okay, so My Life in France. Oh, okay, so if The Obsession's gone, that means Lord of the Rings is 10, Harry Potter and the Deathly House would be 9. So I guess this is number 8 is My Life in France by Julia Child. This is my favorite memoir. I just, the writing in this is beautiful. The evocation of a time and place is wonderful. And Julia Child's just love of life, her husband cooking, her friends and family, it just like exudes from the page. And there's just like very few books that I think just like elicit such a sheer, just joyous spirit the way that this book does. And the oh, it's just wonderful. I love this memoir. I highly recommend it if you've not read it. It's just so good. So I guess that's number eight. Okay, so I guess what is now number seven is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Uh, again, a very basic choice because I think a lot of people love this book, but this is just such a comfort read for me. I've read this, I don't even know how many times. Um, I love watching the retellings, be it Colin Firth flavor or the 2005 Keira Knightley one or the Lizzie Bennet Diaries. I love an adaptation. I also love retellings, so I love like Heartstone. Like just this like basic story and the number of times it has been retold to great effect. It's just wonderful comforting, lovely, and just I love Jane Austen's wit and her humor and her warmth. So this had to make the list. Okay, number six, uh, and you may be surprised that something like this would come over something like Pride and Prejudice, but this year at least I'm gonna say it does. Magic Breaks by Alana Andrews, because Alana Andrews is my favorite currently writing author. You guys have heard me say that a million times. Um, I just, I just love this Kate Daniels series. I will tell you, I think objectively, quality-wise, her the Hidden Legacy series is probably better than Kate Daniels, just because I think it's a little tighter in terms of its short storytelling. I think the world is a little better articulated. But Kate Daniels is like my beloved favorite child, and I would say that this this is definitely my favorite in the Kate Daniels series. I think that this is definitely yeah, this is definitely my favorite Alona Andrews book. Period. And I think this is probably the best book Alona Andrews has written. It is number seven in that series, so I can't recommend that you just like start there. But it just is such a beautiful mid-series climax that is just, ugh, like it's handled so effectively. Alona Andrews is a writing duo that knows how to do series management in a way that I think so many authors could learn a lot from, just in terms of like knowing how to structure not just a book, but a story over multiple books. They know how to like build up like many climaxes throughout the series. This one was just like such a satisfying culmination of everything that had been building up in the first seven books and then set up fantastic and interesting conflict for the last three books. So for that, I have so much admiration for it in terms of just like genre storytelling. This is an urban fantasy. So this is the highest like fantasy e kind of thing on this list. And yeah. It's just super fucking good. Love this. Love Alona Andrews. This had to be pretty high up on the list. Okay, so now what is <laughs> number five? Oh, guys, sometimes I'm dumb. Number five is All the President's Men by Woodward and Bernstein. And that is because this is my, like, this is my favorite nonfiction book I've ever read. I think it was very uh, formative to me in terms of, like, 
forming my political consciousness and I think my a trait that I very much share shared with my dad is that we are very like justice motivated people. Um, I if on my Enneagram, I am a very strong one with a nine wing. But like, I have a very deep rooted sense of like, fair play, um, truth, it being important to have like, justice served regardless of who, to whom to whom justice is meted out against. And so like the entire project of this of like investigative journalism and finding the story and like, I love the movie adaptation of this book. I have an entire review of this book up somewhere. I will link that. Um, and I just love it. I love it so, so much. It's one that people reference a lot, but I don't know that that many people actually read this book anymore. And I wish they would, or at least I wish that they would see the movie because it's such an important story. It's incredibly relevant uh, in our current political climate. And yeah, I, you know, I think Woodward and Bernstein as people sometimes have a somewhat objectionable public figures. Uh, but regardless of that, this work stands on its own and speaks for itself. It's amazing. Okay, number four on this list is And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. And this had to be on the list and this had to be high on the list because not only do I absolutely love this book, and it's definitely my favorite standalone Christie, um, this book spawned my love of an entire type of mystery, which is the isolated closed circle mystery. If you guys watch this channel, you know that I love those. I've been really on the hunt for them this year. And yeah, this is like the best version of that kind of story that has ever been told and probably ever will be. Uh, I just think that this, this atmosphere in this book is incredibly effective. There's just this real sense of psychological menace that I think is super effectively communicated. It's a it's a fantastic book. It has stood the test of time for very good reason. And you know, not everybody's gonna love an Agatha Christie book. I get that. But like, this is, I think, just one of her very, very best in terms of doing what she does to perfection. So yeah, I think everybody should at least give this a try. And I would say if you like the movie Clue, if you like the movie Murder by Death, if you like an isolated close circle mystery, you definitely should go back and read this. We have come to the top three and we have come to a little bit of a shakeup because I was I was reflecting on my top two favorite books that I always say I would you know if you've been watching this channel you can you've often heard me talk about my number one and my number two all-time favorite books um and I was just reflecting and I realized that I don't think that the book that I had as number two is truly my second all-time favorite book anymore like it was hard for me to say this and like come to this realization but I think if I'm being true to myself the Remains of the Day should be my third favorite book and not my second favorite book at this point. Now, it's still number three. I still absolutely adore this book. This is like, ugh, I don't even have words to talk about this book. I just love it so much. It is a perfect historical fiction book. Um, it evokes the time period incredibly effectively. It has a unreliable narrator, I guess, but just sort of like a very specifically, an, a, a narrator with a very specific point of view. Um, this is an entire book about time and regret and what it means to acknowledge that you have made some fundamental errors in your life towards the end of it and like what what you're gonna do with the remains of the day that you have left the day being your life. Um, this is about a butler this is from the point of view of a butler who served in like one of the major English country houses during the interwar period between World War One and World War Two, and him reflecting on sort of like how he has derived meaning in his life and how that might be um, kind of like a hollow choice. <sighs> and it's just so good. It's beautifully written. It's beautifully realized. There's such a tender, there's, you know what, that's such a good word. There's a lot of just like underlying tenderness in this book in terms of the characters and their motivations and just like, Mr. Stevens, I just have all of the tender feelings and tenderness towards him. And it's just, that is the word, is tender. I just feel like, I feel his in immense vulnerability that is hidden behind the sort of stiff upper lip, do your dutiness, and I just, ugh, it crushes my little heart. I just feel so much for him. So anyway, um, I absolutely, you can tell, I still absolutely adore this book, but um, I just don't think it really is quite my second favorite book. I think my actual second all-time favorite book is the only repeat author on this list, and that is Agatha Christie. And I'm going to say Cards on the Table because I have determined that this is my all-time favorite Christie, and I just couldn't leave And Then There Were None off of this list because I just feel like it's such a 
taste defining book that I love, but this is my favorite one. So I had to have them both. And so anyway, I'm not going to go on too long about this because if you watch this channel, but at all, you have heard me gush about Agatha Christie quite enough. I have an entire review series of the Poirot books all bajillion of them. Um, and so you can check out my review. I specifically did this one and all of the Poirot books, but needless to say, I've determined that this is my favorite Christie. And so it has to be number two because Agatha Christie is my all time favorite author. And I just think that at least this year, I have to say that this is my second all time favorite book. But that leaves my all time favorite book, which if you are a long time watcher of this channel, you already know, but we can just end the suspense here and reaffirm that Jane Eyre is my all-time favorite book. Yeah, again, I, I just feel like I talk about this book a lot. I love, oh, so many things about it. I love the writing. I love the characters. I love the philosophical stance of this book. Like the ideas in this book just like rev my engines. Mm, so good. There's so many memorable scenes, memorable lines. Jane is just, She's just so good. I love the ending. I know a lot of people don't. This ending is perfect. I won't hear otherwise. It's so good. And I just, I remember the first time I read this, I was 16 years old. We were on a college tour in Virginia Tech and I just couldn't be bothered with Virginia Tech because I was just wanting to read this book. My 16 year old little heart pitter pattered at the dark danger of Rochester and my 32 year old heart also pitter patters for it. I just love it so much. It's a very basic choice, but yeah, facts are facts. I just adore this book and uh, it is my all-time favorite. I don't really see that changing anytime soon. I mean, of course, I could be proven wrong. Watch me read a book next week that overtakes this, but as of now, here in the year of our Lord 2019, this is unquestionably my favorite book and I don't really see a path for which this gets demoted anytime soon. So yeah, there we go. I feel like uh, that was a long overdue video that was very remiss on my part to not address the uh, top 10 favorites of it all. Um, I can't believe that I've never done a video like this before, but somehow I hadn't. Uh, so yeah, here in 2019, those are my top 10 all time favorite books, actually really 11 because as you saw, homegirl uh, messed up a little bit because I don't have a physical copy of All the President's Men because I couldn't find a hardback one. So anyway, I think that that will do it for me for now. So of course I will ask you what is your all time favorite book or your all time top few. Uh, you can leave that below in the comments. Let me know below what you think of some of these books. And yeah, I think that that will do it. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you're so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you are having an absolutely lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.